Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path lecture series and this is the new module, the PALM module which is practical aspect of lab medicine. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. We also have a telegram group which is helpful for accessing all lecture related information. You can join the group. We also have a Google Drive where the PDF of all lectures are uploaded and you can view them. These are the disclaimers. And it is very important here to emphasize that we do not sponsor any company, group, or organization. Reference to any particular brand is purely at the discretion of the presenter, solely done for understanding and explaining the subject. We do not subscribe to any brand. This is phase three, the recorded lecture group and series. And we are right now in Palm 02, which is on the effects of pre-analytical variables on the quality of lab testing and we are streaming from the Apollo Diagnostic Zonal Office. And to speak on this, we have Dr. Obik Banerjee, who is an MBBS, MD Pathology. He's also an MBA in Healthcare Management. Presently is a Zonal Technical Chief, East Zone, Apollo Diagnostic Regional Reference Laboratory, Kolkata. He has more than 11 years of post-MD experience. In current role, he's responsible for the technical operation of approximately 30 laboratories across East India. He has been the ex-internal ex examiner for DMLT curriculum approved by the state medical faculty. His research areas are in relation to lab medicine, pathology, routine and specialized chemistry, lab qualities control, healthcare management, and laboratory operation. He's got many articles in national journals and healthcare magazines. He's got the leadership award of 2019 in the Achievers cat category by the Indian Express Group and Express Healthcare. With this, I would request Dr. Ob Obik Banerjee to start the lecture on effects of pre-analytical variables on the quality of laboratory testing. So Dr. Obik Banerjee, all yours. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, the topic is effects of pre-analytical variables on the quality of laboratory testing. So, first of all, if you go through the words of this first slide, you have to first understand what are pre-analytical variables and what are the effects of these pre-analytical variables. That means if there are some variation in the pre-analytical factors, what will be the impact on quality of laboratory testing? That means what will be the impact ultimately on patient's test report. So introduction, so what are pre-analytical errors? So pre-analytical variations or variables, these are defined as errors which occur when non-analytical factors change the concentration of the analytes. so that the results do not reflect the condition of the patient. So see if we the ultimate importance why we select a laboratory medical laboratory for getting an accurate error free report. So the report quality may be affected due to several reasons. The report quality may be affected due to several reasons. Number one, there are some analytical variables. That means it starts from the test ordering or you can say it start, uh, if test ordering by the physician, we can say in the laboratory or in a sample collection facility, it starts from the registration or billing and it ends until the sample is delivered to the technicians for sample processing. This is the entire step for pre antical That means patient's billing, ordering patient billing or test registration. Then it will go to sample collector. That means phlebotomist. He will collect the sample. Then sample transport in proper fashion. Then it will reach the laboratory, it will be accessioned or sample receiving area, it will be received by the laboratory and ultimately it goes to the 
testing section or inside the department when it will be tested by the technician. So that means there is a huge area where these periodical errors may take place. It may happen at the billing or registration area. It may happen during the phlebotomy area. It may happen during transport or it may happen inside the lab but before testing that means at the sample receiving area that means during the accessioning by an accession executive during barcoding etc right so periodical errors uh, have been reported to account for more than two-thirds of all laboratory errors that means if a quality of testing is hampered it may happen either in the periodical phase it may happen during the analytical phase when the technician uh, tests the sample uh, either by autom automated instrument or by manual processing whatever and post analytical means after the analysis when the test gets reported and it may uh, the uh, it uh, the get, uh, reports gets released it is during the handover or during download due to any problem in the software maybe during data entry or it may be due to IT failure during interfacing. So these are the post article after processing of the analysis of the sample that may also happen. But what we have noticed that whatever errors happen, the maximum uh, 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 mistake happen at the pre-analytical phase before the sample reaches the technician for processing, right? So uh, pre-analytical variables can account for up to 70% of laboratory error. So if it is a actually a laboratory error, there are sometimes there are many concerns, complaints. Maybe you will find that it is not at all a laboratory error. That after discussing with the doctor or the uh, uh, patient, you will uh, they they are okay and there is no laboratory error. But yes, if actually there is a laboratory error, it may happen at three uh, phases: either pre-analytical or analytical or post-analytical. And pre-analytical variables account for up to 70 percent. That is the two-third of the laboratory error, right? So. What are the reasons why so uh, much variation or so much error happens at the pre-analytical phase? The reason is that you know that all the now there are many players in the market, right? Med uh, medical laboratory, may, so many medical laboratories in India. You, we, may, we are having lakhs of medical laboratories. Some are big corporate giants. Some are standalone laboratories, fragmented, uh, or they are organized players, whatever. But everyone is has till now concentrated on better technology in the analytical part everyone has very good quality machines right for, for, uh, for vendors like Siemens, Roche, Beckman, Kunter, Abbott everyone is having very robust analyzer the days are gone uh, are gone now when uh, people used to uh, test everything manually uh, mixing of reagents pipetting etc everything now it is automated most of the good laboratories at least in the cities all tier two tier one uh, tier three cities also they are having analyzers auto analyzers right semi automated or fully automated analyzers so state of the instrumentation are common in most laboratories and what the what is the impact of this we are very much the laboratories are very much sound they are very much capable at the analytical phase the chance of errors are decreasing day by day because we are also running commercial quality control there are many alternative performance assessment like interlaboratory comparison we are having split testing blind testing detail testing replicate testing there are many things right commercial uh, ECAS extra proficiency testing are there uh, good quality machines are there so chance of error in this analytical phase is very very less but you must have noticed that still now in India in pre-analytical phase during sample collection during sample billing sample transport it is entirely dependent on the uh, manual part right it's, it's entirely dependent on the uh, human being it is not at, uh, at all automated some automation has definitely taken place in the pre-analytical area uh, in, uh, we have now barcoding we have now uh, barcode scanners where the tubes are are barcoding so some amount of automation has taken place but it is not at all comparable to the analytical part even in post analytical phase, you, may see, you have must have seen that uh, manual data entry has been reduced now. 
in at least in good laboratories better uh, good equipped better equipped laboratories because there is robust it framework there is lis laboratory information management system so there is direct data transfer from machine to lis so manual data entry has reduced now at least in big laboratories right so post analytical that part also it is not so much uh, uh, i mean uh, they are prone to error but what is the uh, problem in pre analytical error area because to err is human because it is mo much more human dependent till now in out outside countries like abroad uh, we have now introduced mean they have now introduced cobots robots where they are helping uh, the phlebotomist in collection of blood uh, in uh, there have been total lab automation where there have been uh, uh, pneumatic shoots also there have been many uh, uh, instruments uh, where the, the sample, uh, which are being used for sample transportation from one department to another so that is there has also been some artificial use of artificial intelligence so in outside countries maybe the analytical error they are trying to uh, control it in a more ro robust way with the help of automation but in india or the uh, developing countries the scenario is far i mean that that improvement has also not uh, up to the mark so but in spite of that even in global other outside country outside india also ultimately the pre analytical area is still much more human dependent and that's why almost 70% error happens in that this area right so the pre analytical process starts from ordering the test like for example here we will not discuss much regarding the ordering of test but still i will say that uh, like a doctor right when he is prescribing the test he uh, uh, should uh, be aware of some things like that uh, um, uh, that uh, if a patient is critically ill okay he is having some uh, uh, he is uh, he's admitted in icu or in icu like uh, whatever he is critically ill at that time if you collect the lipid order the lipid profile if you order the thyroid tsh okay this test thyroid profile this test may be uh, falsely um, uh, elevated or they may uh, they the those uh, illness which are not related to thyroid disorder they, but uh, they may impact the tsh uh, t34 result right non thyroidal illness also mm. so uh, similarly lipid profile also may be impacted due to some uh, uh, when the patient is, to is in toxic phase patient is very severely ill so at that time we cannot order the test during uh, ma, 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 uh, the, ma, the patient preparation regarding patient preparation uh, there is very important that you will have to ask the patient for uh, 10 to 12 hours fasting uh, uh, for before lipid profile testing collection of the sample is very important transport to lab receiving lab all these we will uh, discuss in subsequent slides okay so patient's identification drawing blood from the wrong person it frequently happens that uh, in a collection center what is in nabl which we call scf sample collection facility uh, in a particular room there are many patients like three or four patients ideally you should patient, collect patient sample one by one but it is not being possible uh, in most of the laboratory because of the huge rush or everything anything uh, so what is happening that uh, you make uh, uh, even uh, the phlebotomist is not verifying the identity of the patient so it is very very important to verify the identity of the patient in a uh, just imagine that in a reception they, uh, there are three four patients uh, standing or everybody is in hurry and only one receptionist during billing maybe by mistake uh, one patient uh, uh, is asking for hbsag hiv whatever etc but uh, by mistake the billing was done differently like uh, uh, or the uh, after the registration uh, the um, uh, uh, mr xx should uh, ask uh, actually he used for, uh, ask for hbsg but by mist uh, the by mistake y person's request that is that may be a cbc or sugar was registered in this expression so uh, um, uh, that may happen also during uh, a mistake during billing similarly uh, uh, you when you are collecting patients of you are intending to collect patient, uh, mr y's sample but uh, when you are labeling the uh, vacutainer uh, after taking x patient's blood inside the vacutainer you labeled it uh, as y so patients this kind of wrong collection or mislabeling is a has a detrimental effect on the patient's uh, results because it will be entirely wrong right so at least two identifiers two, minimum two identifiers like it may be a barcode along with that patient's name gender age that should be mentioned at least two identifiers should be mentioned on the vacutainer so that there is always chance of verification okay otherwise it will uh, it, it will go uh, we will have a very wrong reporting right 
नेक्स्ट इज पेशेंट प्रिपरेशन लाइक एज आई टोल फॉर ग्लूकोज फास्टिंग ग्लूकोज मिनिमम एट टू टेन आवर्स फास्टिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड मिनिमम एट आवर्स एंड फॉर लिपिड प्रोफाइल मिनिमम टेन टेन टू ट्वेल्व आवर्स फास्टिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड सो यू शुड नॉट हैव एल्कोहल फॉर एटलीस्ट टू डेज बिफोर टू डेज प्रायर टू लिपिड प्रोफाइल टेस्टिंग बिकॉज एल्कोहल इट एफेक्ट्स द ट्राइग्लिसाइड लेवल ऑफ ब्लड ओके सो कॉट इज ऑल एसिड एज हैव डायरनल वेरिएशन यू हैव टू कीप अ नोट इफ यू आर टेस्टिंग अ पेशेंट टेस्टोस्टर sample actually should be collected at 8 am around 8 am because at that time the testosterone uh, peak is a there is a peak of testosterone similarly cortisol and acetate those should be co- uh, collected at right time like for cortisol 8 am to uh, 8 am to 10 uh, uh, they say uh, at around 8 am and other is 3 pm 3 to 5 pm and uh, 8 to 10 am 8 to 10 am and 3 to 5 pm that is the requirement because reference changes are also established in that fashion because they have uh, uh, diurnal variation okay if proper uh, uh, this kind of protocols were not followed it is the responsibility of the laboratory to uh, reject the samples okay so that is important now selecting the site you have to uh, 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 median cubital vein is the most preferred site because that is the most uh, prominent vein that is anchored to underlying structure so uh, chance of uh, 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 i mean uh, double picking or like that those things are very less and you it is very easy to collect yes but if by chance you are not being able to collect from median cubital vein then you can use uh, cephalic or basilic vein but preferred is median cubital vein ne- uh, less uh, there is uh, um, uh, ch- um, uh, num- uh, number 2 is site preparation there is a common mistake that Uh, once you are when you are decontaminating the site with alcohol you should uh, there is a proper way of cleansing cleansing right from central to periphery otherwise there is always a chance of uh, the periphery uh, in the periphery there are many i mean common cells okay common cells skin common cells which will come to the center from where you will pick uh, prick the vein so they will unnecessarily may give a false growth in the blood culture sample or they may give a false uh, contamination in a blood sample so there is a proper way of using either in the circular fashion from central to periphery or longitudinal fashion from central to away periphery okay before performing the vein picture the alcohol should be 70% alcohol should be used only and that should be allowed to dry air dry because why if the alcohol remains at that in that wet area if you uh, prick and uh, the alcohol will contaminate the needle and both that alcohol uh, will hemolyze the blood tourniquet application time uh, the tourniquet should be uh, should not be uh, stayed more than 1 minute Uh, usually, uh, it is a uh, it is a uh, I have seen a common practice during audit that when the phlebotomist is speaking, the blood is coming through a closed evacuation system. Uh, the ideal rule is whenever you are getting the fa- the first vacutainer, you the first blood comes to the first vacutainer immediately. The importance of uh, uh, there is no uh, further importance of the uh, tourniquet. You can release the tourniquet because that is already the uh, aim of the uh, tying a tourniquet is to just to engorge the area. Okay, but once the blood st- starts coming, starts flowing. there is no need to keep it tight but we i have seen in till, till the end of the collection people keep it tight in that same area there is no need of that uh, because uh, if you keep the tourniquet more than 3 minutes not only it is painful it may be it, uh, it may cause uh, frame, uh, inflammation of the area but also there is false increase false elevation of total protein triglyceride cholesterol bilirubin lactate etc moreover what will happen the, uh, once you tie the tourniquet it remains for long time uh, there will be clotting system should be uh, 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 coagulation system will be in vivo it will be uh, activated and there will be false uh, result of prothrombin type apt etc so uh, there is chance of lysis also rbc will break down there will be uh, false low platelet count etc etc proper venipuncture technique there should not be any double pick no need to fish excessive probing of the area because otherwise it will uh, uh, not only it is painful but also it will lyse the blood hemolysis will happen order of draw it is very important as per the uh, clinical and laboratory standard institute formerly nccls have established recommendation first is blood culture because that is the most after the decontamination the decontaminating with alcohol the site of uh, puncture that is the most sterile site and you should collect the blood culture in the most sterile fashion so first is blood culture then immediately coagulation why uh, not other because uh, otherwise the pt will falsely uh, uh, the blood flow slowly slowly uh, it uh, uh, the blood flow uh, it gets slow so what will happen the pt may falsely get elevated okay coagulation so second is coagulation uh, third is serum tube that is uh, uh, gel tube okay where we will take biochemistry and then is uh, 
there is uh, ETA, heparin, and then EDT, and lastly, uh, fluoride. Why fluoride? Because if you there is fluoride contamination, fluoride may falsely uh, um, inhibit the action of the urease, cholesterol, etc., which are uh, which may impact the biochemistry result. So uh, at last, the gly uh, fluoride bulb before that EDTA. Don't take EDTA before the gel tube because if the EDTA is there in the needle, it uh, the, that EDTA will uh, what will happen? It will go to the biochemistry and uh, tube and in the gel tube what will happen a EDTA uh, tube actually contains sodium potassium EDTA so there will be falsely high sodium and potassium and also the calcium uh, which is uh, which, uh, which is uh, EDTA it will also chill at the calcium in the gel tube in the biochemistry tube that will so in what will happen you will get falsely high sodium potassium and very low calcium value so never take in a closed collection system when you are uh, having a closed collection system like uh, the needle is there inside the, uh, inside the vein and you are uh, one by one you are putting the vacutainer uh, behind the needle uh, then what will happen uh, the, uh, in that case uh, never take uh, uh, EDTA tube before the gel tube first gel then after that EDTA I will show you a live so these are the different kind of vacutainers. Uh, uh, this is a blood culture, a blood culture tube. This is a um, um, uh, sodium citrate blue top where they will take coagulation. Then you will have gel tube. Uh, then you will have gel tube. Then you will uh, have uh, uh, heparin. Then uh, uh, ETA. Then gray top like fluoride. And lastly, uh, uh, there's a black top. Uh, the, 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 this one is the fascia. Um, and uh, the, the, this is the order of draw which should be uh, displayed in all the phlebotomy uh, uh, area, phlebotomy collection, uh, collection room. Uh, so uh, you can see that uh, this what is very important that after collection of the uh, vacutainer, after collection of sample in the vacutainer, it should be uh, properly mixed inversion. What is it is not side by side or vigorous shaking, it is just inversion. One inversion means it's a complete 180 turn. It should the pore should come from the wrist, not from the elbow. So, um, uh, there will be um, uh, no uh, the proper inversion is very much important uh, for all tubes. Uh, please remember this is very important 8 to 10 times inversion is required only for citrate tube, it is 3 to 4 times. So, all tubes SST, EDTA, etc., this should uh, glucose fluoride this should be 8 to 10 inversion but only for site is 3 to 4 times. Why it is important? Because this in, in case of an inadequate inversion what will happen? The anticoagulant and blood mixing will not be proper and in that case there will be uh, in uh, that case there will be no proper uh, their chance of uh, um, uh, clot clots right if you you are not uh, mix, uh, mixing the blood properly with anticoagulant by proper inversion of 8 to 10 times in EDTO tube what will happen uh, there will be clot formation and you will um, you may get falsely low that let cow it frequently happens right but excessive inversion like uh, more than three to four times in a cyclic is not allowed because it uh, falsely uh, impacts the prothrombin so this is a real life ex experience in an improper order of draw what happens if you uh, draw EDTA prior to biochemistry SST, the potential cross contamination of K2 or uh, um, K3 EDTA on the needle from the lavender top tube to chemistry tube can lead to falsely elevated potassium result. Similarly, it is uh, frequently seen in a hospital setting that when the patient is being infused with IV saline, and from the same hand, if you are collecting from the same arm, if you are collecting a glucose or sodium, there will be a dilutional hyponatremia or falsely low glucose. Also, expired vacuum you can see that this sample was collected and the expiry date was uh, May 2020 but it was collected in 2023 so three years what will happen if you use an expired vacutainer the vacutainer that is a vacuum will be vacuum will go away and uh, there will be uh, the purpose of the vacutainer is lost because what happens the vacutainer when you just put the needle uh, uh, above this lid it will automatically suck that amount of blood which is required uh, for proper maintaining the proper issue of uh, anticoagulant with uh, blood but if this vacuum is gone then uh, uh, that amount of blood will not be uh, uh, you have to manually adjust the amount of blood and that may alter the issue of anticoagulant and uh, blood ratio 
ratio which may lead to a false erroneous result similarly uh, the due to expiry of the uh, vacutainer the anticoagulant inside that that means fluoride or edt or whatever in heparin it is there that uh, the efficacy of that particular anticoagulant will be uh, lost and uh, the purpose will not be solved so never use an expired vacutainer it should always be um, checked by the inventory audit system whether any expired vacutainer is found inside the collection so these are real time example where you can see that the calcium is was very very low in a young adult uh, patient which is who is otherwise healthy all parameters are okay except for calcium is 1 and potassium is 14 so what is happening here that means uh, it happened that the phlebotomist later on accepted that yes uh, edta uh, tube uh, actually the, um, uh, the there was no adequate blood there were multiple tests in this patient so what he did he poured uh, uh, the blood from edta vacutainer to us sst serum separator tube for biochemistry test because uh, uh, biochem there was no sufficient blood for biochemistry and what happened from India that K2 caused cross contamination of the K2 EDTA. So potassium uh, increased and calcium is too low because of the chelating effect of the EDTA. So this was the email where the uh, doctor has suspected that the lab doctor has suspected. So you have to be very vigilant about to avoid this. So this is the inversion as we already told how many times you should invert. So all this should be expiry date that we already uh, explained. This is the <coughs> you see that in the good quality vacutainer, even the minimum quantity, especially for citrate tube, minimum quantity and maximum quantity of blood they have uh, marked. And uh, if uh, it is collected, the, uh, sometimes it's a wrong practice by the phlebotomist, they open the lid and they pour the blood from the syringe. That is a wrong practice because if you have any uh, excess or low amount of blood underfilling, especially underfilling, then it will falsely uh, uh, give an uh, 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 give an erroneous result for the prothrombin and EPTT. So up to this amount of blood should only be collected. Okay, so it will uh, the ideal as per NCCLS or CLSI guideline, the blood to anticoagulant ratio should be nine is to one. Uh, so here you can see also that EDTA per milliliter of blood 1.2 milligram EDTA should ideally be used 2 milligram of sodium fluoride per milliliter of blood so excess will inhibit all the enzymes so uh, for HB1C K2 EDTA only should be used not liquid EDTA because there will be a result of dilutional effect so these uh, things must be kept in mind and you should always use good quality uh, <coughs> company vacutainers for testing See, uh, proper tube handling and specimen processing, it is um, uh, sometimes seen due to hurry. The collection center, uh, they uh, uh, never wait after the collection of the blood that should be settled. Uh, they should, uh, the red top tubes are the, they should be, uh, they should uh, give the adequate time for clot formation, 45 to 60 minutes for serum separator tube, gel tube, minimum 30 minutes to uh, clot formation. But before only clot formation, they, uh, um, um, uh, they centrifuge and it, uh, it leads to hemolysis. So uh, that uh, should be, that is a very important thing after settling, settling the clot formation only you should centrifuge and then you process. These are the, some of the venipuncture errors, pre-test errors, procedural errors which may lead to uh, 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 erroneous reports. So uh, um, even uh, uh, sometimes excessive tinting of the fist during collection uh, they uh, give rise to falsely uh, elevation of some of the param parameters. So centrifugation that is very important see here due to inadequate centrifugation all the bloods have been hemolyzed and you can see that uh, uh, for uh, all the vacutainers uh, 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 centrifugation is not recommended for polymer vacutainers like EDTA, TB gold and heparin for rest of the uh, tubes like gel tube, clot tube the ideal speed of uh, speed is 3500 or 4000 rpm for 10 minutes like for citrate also so this is the ideal temp, uh, rpm so your centrifuge also centrifuge machine should also be properly <laughs> calibrated so that speed time etc are duly calibrated there is no error in the centrifuge if that is erroneous then even if you fix the speed at 4000 or 3500 and you fix your temp, uh, timing also for 10 minutes or like that but you, will, you are never uh, sure that whether if, if uh, adequate centrifugation is happening or not because your centrifuge is not calibrated so that is also 
inadequate centrifugation may lead to erroneous result that is false elevation of potassium phosphorus etc potential variation you can see that the laboratory has received these samples and the temperature was 25.7 there was no gel pack or ice pack inside the uh, uh, delivery bag so what will happen this is all will the samples uh, once they have reached lab especially in this summer extreme summer condition they will get deteriorated and uh, the results will definitely be wrong so you all know about the hemolysis you can see this uh, pink or uh, uh, pink uh, tinge in the sample that is called hemolysis there are many grades of hemolysis like uh, uh, um, plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 depending uh, some for some parameters mild hemolysis is accepted but for parameters like potassium ldh even pth even mild uh, hemolysis may grossly impact the test result so uh, uh, be very careful and uh, if required immediately reject the uh, uh, hemolysis, hemolysis sample to avoid any error in your test. So there are several reasons for hemolysis as I told during sample collection, um, um, wrong venipuncture, prolonged tourniquet time, not drying the alcohol, uh, improper uh, needle, too small or too large bore needle, these all may lead to hemolysis. Um, uh, vigorous mixing or shaking, not inversion, but vigorous mixing may lead to hemolysis. Um, uh, not uh, adequate centrifugation time or uh, delaying in centrifugation or too fast centrifugation, uh, prop, uh, improper transport without ice pack may all lead to uh, hemolysis. As you have seen, it is a hemolysis in a uh, glucose uh, vial. So these are the precautions to avoid hemolysis. Um, that mix all tubes with anticoagulants IIT gently. Avoid drawing blood from a hematoma, select another draw site. If uh, um, uh, you have to use proper bore needle and um, make sure the venipuncture site is dry, avoid uh, excessive probing, fishing, etc. Traumatic venipuncture, you have to avoid prolonged tourniquet application. Uh, excessive massaging, squeezing, and uh, probing a site is not allowed. And fist clenching, you can just ask the patient to clench his fist just for prominence of the vein. Once the blood started starts flowing, immediately uh, ask advise patient to slowly, slowly uh, remove the uh, fisting. Okay, these are the uh, uh, impact of hemolysis which may interfere with test results. Overestimation, hemoly yeah, hemolysis sample may lead to overestimation of LDAST, creatinine, LDH iron and underestimation of albumin, alkali uh, phosphatase, GGT, glucose, etc. So this is the rejection analysis in the laboratory in Kolkata. See uh, the different uh, kinds of uh, problems which may uh, lead to rejection. Uh, we to maintain quality and uh, it is important uh, for our laboratory to document the every cause of rejection and to maintain our log sheet because any uh, improper sample may lead to uh, erroneous season. But at the same time, if uh, uh, there is excessive rejection, it is also the responsibility of the laboratory to uh, um, uh, call and say sensitize the client and arrange for proper training for the phlebotomist or whoever is responsible so that rejection can be avoided because sample rejection is also a traumatic experience for a patient or customer who needs to again give his or her blood right so it is a bad uh, excessive rejection is also a bad quality uh, index or quality parameter uh, for a laboratory so the, you should always monitor, every lab should always monitor the rejection um, uh, percentage from uh, uh, and whether it is increasing or decreasing or it is uh, and they should always from month to month and they should have a, uh, it should be used as a quality indicator uh, to improve the performance of the phlebotomist uh, logistics and all the pre all the persons who are responsible with the, uh, pre uh, to maintain the pre-analytical quality. So these are the uh, um, um, example where the laboratory has rejected a hemolytic sample. Some of these are the uh, wrong practices. You see the phlebotomist has not, uh, first uh, mistake is not, use, not using gloves, which is improper because it may, uh, uh, self injury, it may happen. Also, second is this, uh, uh, the improper technique, uh, keeping the cotton swab here because the, uh, uh, this cotton swab which will be used for uh, um, sterilization of the site or uh, it should be used later on, uh, this uh, um, uh, 
use of uh, tunicate has been used for multiple types of multiple patients many a time we forget to decontaminate uh, with alcohol of the tunicate after each collection so what will happen it may in any case of any uh, other patient has uh, any some uh, any other patient it may cross uh, uh, it may lead to cross contamination from one patient to another also this is another wrong practice by the phlebotomist that is a recapping of the needle which may lead to injury of the um, uh, uh, fin uh, finger pricking mm -hmm. so that is also not allowed this is excessive um, uh, shaking or vigorous shaking of the tube which may lead to hemolysis so these are some wrong practices so what are the improvement steps accurate patient identification repeatedly i am telling proper identification is a must always before collection uh, of the of, of sample from a patient you always ask the patient that what is his name or age etc and uh, you check with the bill we you check with the test requisition form and you uh, mention the name and etc uh, um, uh, show him the show the patient that it is uh, whether the vacutaner is the men name mentioned on the vacutaner is uh, belongs to that particular patient it also raises the confidence of the patient that yes his name is mentioned on the vacutaner so uh, i have seen many phlebotomists uh, that they write the name after collection that is a wrong on the vacutaner they write the name after collection this is a wrong practice because they should write the name beforehand then they collect the uh, sample after showing the same to patient to avoid any mistake of wrong uh, uh, um, uh, uh, wrong collection or mislabeling correct patient preparation like fasting etc like before collection of a profound mean time they should always ask the history of anticoagulant whether they are taking or not uh, thyroid medication uh, uh, history should be taken before um, and should be entered in the remarks part of the laboratory information system or the test requisition form whether uh, the patient is uh, uh, taking any eltroxine or thyronum uh, proper uh, precaution and techniques during collection and ensure correct way of transport so it should not happen we have seen that uh, lab, uh, many laboratories nowadays they are for health camps the samples are uh, um, uh, without uh, they are uh, they are after collection maybe at 8 am or 9 am they have been collected but they are lying under the direct sunlight exposure without any insight any um, uh, proper collection uh, bag or there was no ice pack they are lying uh, in the direct exposure of the sunlight and after at evening they have reached the laboratory which all uh, by then already the analyzed stability has been deteriorated and it will lead to wrong result okay so these are the ways of uh, improvement, uh, barcode scanners whenever it is possible, barcoding of tube to uh, reduce the error. These are very much important improvement steps, proper tube handling, centrifugation, uh, uh, then regular inventory check to look for any expired vacuous, etc. Maintaining error logs, checking at accession and lab area, whether why these periodical errors are happening at which step, whether it was a, um, uh, at site, collection site or do, uh, you got a poor temperature during transport, everything should be documented so that at that area, particular area where the mistakes are happening, we can arrange for proper training. So, periodic participation in training program is very much important. So, these are the prevention of pre-article errors. These are the some uh, five P's I have mentioned protocol like there should be a sample collection manual, uh, proper transport protocol, proper accessioning protocol, uh, personnel should be properly trained, the, uh, you should use proper good quality products for venipuncture, you should use good quality vacutainers etc. Performance matrices so you have to you should maintain your quality indicators where you should see how much is the percentage of um, rejection sample as I told how much percentage is the repeat sample why you are repeating why you are taking uh, multiple time samples why you are rejecting the samples and accordingly the improvement improving communication among healthcare professionals and uh, percolation of the information what is what is the good practice that should be proactively informed like there should be some email communication there may be some phone calls or training sessions to your uh, sample collection facility to your phlebotomist where you should inform how to uh, uh, improve the processes like uh, you can mention how to uh, do a proper collection uh, how to do transporting what are the things you should maintain uh, or you should inform uh, the patient before collection uh, so um, uh, advise the um, patient uh, uh, the advisories to patients they should be circulated
सो टेक होम मैसेज की दैट द ह्यूमन रोल इन सैम्पल कलेक्शन मेक्स कंप्लीट एलिमिनेशन ऑफ एरर्स एसोसिएटेड विद लेबोरेटरी टेस्टिंग अनरियलिस्टिक बिकॉज टिल नाउ इन द प्री आर्टिकल फेज वी आर ह्यूमन डिपेंडेंट सो कंप्लीट एलिमिनेशन ऑफ एरर्स इज नॉट पॉसिबल बट व्हाट वी मस्ट अवॉइड दैट रिपीट मिस्टेक सो हाउ वी कैन अवॉइड रिपीट मिस्टेक हाउ कैन इंप्रूव बाय यूजिंग प्रॉपर ट्रेनिंग proper repeated training competency assessment etc good practices compliance with the new strategies for error prevention can lead to a substantial reduction in the article thank you